on your video. Uh, you don't need all the bells and whistles and the fancy rest, uh, hotel and all that sort of gear, or restaurants for that matter, because we stayed at a caravan park and ate sort of yeah, some pub meals and uh, um, sort of what, whatever we could get our little grubby mitts on and, and had a rad time. So uh, yeah, man, the weather was, was mint. Uh, we stayed at the RAC Caravan Park, which is so not the Cable Beach one, but it is in Cable Beach. Uh, right on the corner, like just back from from divers there, uh, and we, we we stayed in that one because we were we were planning on on taking the dogs with us, uh, and then at the last sort of minute we decided not to because we thought oh it'd be a hassle, we won't be able to go to the pub or out for dinner with them or anything like that, which we didn't do a whole lot of anyway. We did more of of hanging out at the beach and felt guilty the entire time that I was at the beach because I didn't have the dogs. Um, so there you go, shame on us for not taking the, the pups. And uh, they would have had a rad time as well, but they didn't, they stayed with me brother here instead. So, um, yeah, it was just bloody really nice, man. Um, the caravan park was mint, they had a pool there, which was super intense, it's like not relaxing, it's like Kidsville, but you know, we got kids, so the kids were, were loving it. We went with another family, uh, one of Heidi's little friends, or her little bestie, her little BFF, and their, their parents, who are mates of ours as well. So that was cool, it was something for the kids to do. Shady didn't have a, like there was two little girls, then my daughter, Heidi, and then my boy Shady, so he didn't have a, like a little knock around um, boy to hang out with or anything, but uh, it's fine, he just, he just sort of jumped in with, with the girls when he when he was bored. And it was just good, man. The weather was like nice and hot during the day, like warm during the day, hot, warm, whatever. And then pretty cool at night, definitely was cool in the aircon in the caravan anyway, but I think it was mostly pretty cool. Our friends stayed in a tent. They, they had, I think, one, one or two sticky nights, but a couple of nice ones there as well. So it was just pretty good, man. So we spent most of the day, or we'd spend every evening down the beach, um, uh, just hanging out a few beers and tunes and shit like that, watch the sunset go down at Cable Beach there and the camels and chat to other families and shit. Um, and that was really, really nice. And then we sort of went to the pub for lunch and the, the rugby league grand final was on while I was there, so I watched that. Um, didn't do any, I didn't go to the shops or any of that bullshit, which was nice. Sort of, I actually had a couple of naps, a couple of daytime naps, which is, is not a thing really for me. I had a couple of sort of lions, so like maybe getting up about 6, 30-ish, 7-ish, out of bed, like awake before then, but not really getting out of bed until then which was nice and had a couple of daytime naps, man. So I was pretty um, pretty primed for, for with energy for the, by the end of the weekend, which was nice, man, to not go away on holiday and then push yourself and have late nights and early mornings and big days and then come back from holiday wrecked because I don't know about you, but I definitely uh, have been guilty of that like most of the time, I'd say. So that was nice, man. I came back um, reasonably r relaxed. Um, and it was like it was like traveller family central down at that that cable beach as well. Um, Tripping a van are in Broome Town at the moment, staying there for a few months. Um, my missus seen the fella Justin and his daughter down at at the Woolies and had a yarn to them there. I didn't see them around town or anything, but there's some other crews who were doing the the tour around Oz thing, and um, it's funny because most well, I don't know if most of them you only know about the ones that do this, but a lot of people do have the whole Instagram, YouTube channel thing going now. And, and I kind of was always a little bit worried about that um, because I've had this idea for like solid three years now to, to travel the country, take the podcast on the road and it's developed into a YouTube thing as well. But definitely the podcast was the main um, goal. And I always, and then that's how actually how I heard about Trip and Event. So I was telling a mate of mine that, yeah, I want to, do this podcast, keep doing it, and want to travel Australia, and I think it would be cool to take the podcast on the road and talk to people around the country, as, and just do your own podcast as well, but then go to different towns and meet cool people and and, and locals and shit and, and talk to them. And then he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, like trip in a van sort of thing. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And then he, he put me onto the trip in a van crew and started following them on Insta and, and YouTube and obviously... I'm all over their shit now and get a lot of tips and, and advice and stuff from from where they've been and how they do things and and love their videos and, and that so but it was definitely already an idea that I had and then you know because I was nowhere near ready to do it financially I was like thinking oh man I hope that this doesn't become a 
like a saturated market while I'm sitting around getting my shit together to get on the road and do it. And I mean, on one hand, it, it definitely is becoming a saturated market. Uh, excuse me, I'll have a drink. Um, there's all these Instagram families specifically. Like there's a lot of young couples and shit, but a lot of families, which is my lane, you know, um, doing the whole thing and then like they're doing videos on Instagram and YouTube and they got like the logo made up and um, you know, a lot of them have got the sticker work on their on their, their utes or their canopies and shit like that. And so it's definitely a thing. It's not like some new thing that no one's doing. Or, wow, I'm cool, man. But I mean, what? Fuck them. I had the idea ages ago anyway. I didn't have the means to do it. And uh, I know I still don't know of anyone doing a podcast traveling around the country. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. But I don't know of them. So it's not a saturated market, and that is my main my main focus. So, and you know what, in the day, fuck what everyone else is doing anyway, that's not the point. But it is something that plays in the back of my mind, but I'll still do my damn thing anyway. And I kind of got a few little pointers off off that as well. Like I had an idea of maybe getting a, it'll be a new um, logo and a new brand name that revolves around the average man, which I won't reveal just yet, but it'll be something different for the actual travel series when I go around. The podcast will still be Average Man Podcast, but the YouTube channel and probably it's on Instagram page will have a different uh, a different name, but it will link into Average Man, so they'll be sort of still connected, and it won't be um, super different. So you go from one platform to the other um, seamlessly. But yeah, I thought you know it'd be cool to get the logo up, done up and a big sticker on the side of the canopy. I sort of thought about that idea, right? And since seeing a few people who've done that. And then I heard someone else, and my mate's missus actually, they live in Broome, and she was talking about the travelling families going around and uh, mentioned, oh yeah, everyone's and man and their dog's doing it, they've all got a bloody Instagram page and a sticker on the side of their van or canopy, blah, blah, blah. And now look, I don't really give a fuck about her opinion, not that there's anything wrong with the lady, she's a lovely lady, um, nice lady, but I don't really put that much stock in the opinion of other people um, unless there's something specifically that they do that I'm aspiring to or, or can take notes from. So it's not that someone said something and I was like, oh yeah, I can't do it. Someone has a bad opinion of it. But I kind of agreed with her. That was the thing. She said, oh yeah, fuck these, uh, these families, all their, their sticks on the side of their van, just do the trip and and, and um, don't have to tell the whole world about it or something like that. Uh, and I kind of thought, you know what? I actually agree with the whole thing about the sticker on the side of the canopy. Uh, it's It's... It's, I just don't need to do it. I don't need to do it. Not shit on the people that have done it. Some of the graphics look really cool. Uh, some of these people, it probably ties into another business venture that they've got as well. I get it, I was thinking of doing it myself. But now, I'm just, just, I don't need to do it. I don't need to do it. I don't. So, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool how to yak to a family who, who were cruising around. They weren't doing an Instagram page or anything. So, that was just a normal. Family traveling around, had a yarn to old mate. I uh, had the ranger and a canopy on the back and shit. Um, it's just cool hearing people's stories and, and um, what they think about the decision to travel, you know, like with their family. And, and, and I haven't heard a bad word since. He was pretty um, candid, this dude I chatted to. Um, was pretty straight up and just said, yeah, man, like um, life is, you still have all the, the normal everyday problems and issues and 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 uh you know routines that you go through in life you gotta wash the dishes and do your clothes and you gotta do the school work and clean the van and all that kind of shit because you're just doing it in a different location every other day and it's you know and it's spend heaps of time with the family and, and he goes and for this guy specifically he was he was debt free they sold everything to do it so um which i won't be debt free uh, at all but we'll be covered for a year. So that's the that's that's the main I'll be able to pretend I'm debt free for like a year. <laughs> um so but that was cool just to you know, you hear these people, these stories, the reinforcements, um again, not that I'm looking for reinforcement from other people, but it is nice when you hear it. Uh, I'm gonna do this thing anyway, I guess is the main thing. I jump off I we, the family, it's not just me. We are gonna do this thing anyway, but I guess my personality specifically I would jump off the, the edge anyway um, and fucking find, try and find the net afterwards, you know? But it's just nice to hear other people talking about the, the positives of it. So, okay, sweet. So I'm not uh, driving my family to some sort of, ah, my microphone. Not 
driving my family into some sort of <laughs> terrible situation, spending all of our money and shit for no reason. It's, there's some positives there, a lot of positives. So now on the way home from Broome, um, we had a little hiccup. Cruising down the highway, and all of a sudden heard a noise. And a bit of a weird feeling. And I thought, ah, bugger, I've blown a tire on the caravan. So started pulling over straight away, um, pulled over, jumped out, and no blown tire on the van, not on the right hand side, right on the other side. No drive, no no tire blown on the, on the passenger side. Thought, what the fuck was that then? Stuck my head underneath. Well, actually, I think I saw the drawbar and the gas bottle holder ominously missing the gas bottle and the arm that holds it on. So I stuck my head underneath the van and there sitting on between the uh, drawbar and the axle of the caravan or the front axle of the caravan is the gas bottle for the Weber all dinged up, dented and fucked up sitting underneath the van and it had fallen off like the arm had broken and it had fallen off its holder and bounced underneath the car and the <laughs> noise and feeling was it like dragging and bouncing uh, between the axle and the road and like going back and forth. You could see the axle was all like sort of not scarred up but, but marked up from where it had been bouncing, sliding back and forth. It would slide one way, hit the wheel, slide back the other way and hit the wheel, bouncing and shit the whole time between. It was like, holy fuck. Um, so now I've got basically like a bomb, possible bomb, sitting underneath the caravan. Um, and I was shitting myself, to be honest with you. So uh, I grabbed the paddleboard paddle off the roof rack of the car and I like, extended it all the way out. And like I was in a situation where I couldn't just drive off. It was between the car and the van. So I like poked this thing and rolled it out on the passenger side towards the side of the road, rolled it out a little bit, and then went had a bit of a, a look at it, inspected it from as close as I was comfortable getting, and I wanted to see if I could turn the tap on it and open the the, the valve and let all the gas out, but the fin that goes around the top of a gas bottle was all like dinged up, bent it o bent over the, the handle for the, for, the, um, for the valve, so I couldn't do that. And it had a few big scars and shit in it, and there was no no hissing, so it wasn't losing any gas. And I was just like, "Oh man, this thing is dodgy. I need to get the fuck away from it." But I can't take it with me. I can't take a, a gas bottle that might explode with me on the car, or on the van, or anything. Like, no thanks. Um, but I didn't want to just leave it on the side of the road and want to fucking blow up and start a fire, or like the bottle to shoot off and be like a projectile to sword someone's car or some shit. Um, so I was in a bit of a, a bit of a quandary, as you can see, a bit of a predicament. Um, so what I did was I, I figured I'm gonna have to move it. So I grabbed the gas bottle gingerly and like trotted over towards like one of those runoff like culverts, those those gutters in the side of the road that they dig out, and like rolled it down the side of that into the gutter, so it wasn't like at road level, wasn't like right on the edge of the road kind of thought that's as, that's as good as I can do with that I don't know what to do um, so I jumped in the in the car put the paddleboard paddle back on the roof um, fucked off um, and then we called the you know, like a couple hundred meters down the road I think I called them first here yeah, we called the the fire department for broom um, and just told them hey look we're 80 clicks out from Roebuck Bay um, Roadhouse and like three clicks before the eco beach turn off or whatever and you know this is what happened gas bottle fell off the, the draw bar blah 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 and like well, we don't know what to do with it it's sitting there uh, it's on the side of the road it's off off the road a little bit but you know we're worried it might blow up or something um and she goes oh, okay what do you want us to do about it I, was like, oh, I don't know go out and retrieve it or something said, well we're not going to go out there just, it's out there now, it's done. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, well, fuck. You're the emergency services, you're the fire emergency services, Department of Fire Emergency Services. Um, you now know about a possible 
explosion fire causing projectile gas bottle that's dinged up on the side of the road give you a pretty good idea of where it was like because i set my domino when i left roebuck bay state um roebuck roadhouse for, after filling up and then timed it from when i drove off to the eco beast signs so i give her like a few hundred meter radius to find it uh, uh area to find it and wasn't interested so i was like well you know what man i can't fucking do anything with it and you're the emergency services you now know about it that's your problem and i was just i was still super nervous about it drove off down the road and then i heard a weird noise i was like oh, what was that and then a and then the tire blew so I guess the gas bottle had hit it and damaged it at some point and then the tire blew. So we did blow a tire as well and jumped out and quickly changed that bastard over. And then, um, yeah, then off we went. 